Um, Dr. Nagorny, let's begin with you. The, the concept of tailoring drugs, it's becoming something that's more mainstream or at least more common to hear about. Explain it. Well, I think uh, we have to realize that every patient's cancer is as unique as their fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And our job is to try to identify those therapies most likely to work for the individual patient. By using these tests, measuring the patient's own tissue, we can double or in some circumstances triple the response rate. Now that's not perfect, mm -hmm. but it's a demonstrable step up. It also enables us to bring new drugs rapidly into uh, use, so novel combinations and brand new agents can be facilitated mm -hmm. in their development and introduction. Basically using the patient's own cancer to figure out how to treat them in terms of, you know, in the lab and looking at the cancer. Exactly. It's like tailoring your clothing rather than taking it off the rack. I have the luxury of testing 15 or 20 things in a test tube without the patient ever feeling sick from it. See, it's a very attractive system. You can do your legwork in the test tube. As simple as it may sound, developing this kind of lab test for chemotherapy drugs has stymied scientists for decades. Previous attempts look for drugs that simply stop cancer cells from growing. This new approach identifies drugs that actually kill the cancer cells. Published reports representing 500 cases indicate this test can double a patient's response to chemotherapy. Well, the old thinking was that cancer was a disease of cell growth. So patients would manifest excessive proliferation, growth, DNA synthesis. And most of the drugs we have today were designed around that concept. Cancer is growing too much, let's turn off the growth. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you could think of contemporary chemotherapy drugs a little bit like cellular birth control. Mm -hmm. You want to get in there and stop the growth, stop the division, stop the babies. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that that's not what drives cancer. What drives cancer is death and the inability of cells to die. That's a 400 uh, magnification of a cell undergoing program cell death. Uh, as I mentioned, one form which is apoptosis, and uh, that's really increasingly recognized as the process that drives cancer. Every cell in a multicellular organism has a program to die. After all, we know that injured cells, cells that are exposed to toxins, are going to need to be replaced. So the injured cell has a program called programmed cell death that tells that cell that the injury is so severe, a burn, a sunburn, trauma, loss of blood supply, the injury is so severe that the cell can't be fixed. We're not going to repair this. Mm -hmm. It's a total. So you get rid of it and you get a new one. And that program, or program cell death, is what goes awry in cancer. If you want to measure what works in a patient's tissue, you cannot assess that by determining growth inhibition. You can't add a drug in and see if the cells stop dividing. That's irrelevant. What you must do in the test tube is measure whether the cells die outright. So in the laboratory, we have developed these tissue culture methods that don't measure growth and don't propagate cells and don't look at division and DNA synthesis. These tests measure death. And the terminology used today to assess this is called programmed cell death, one variant of which is called apoptosis. Rather than treating patients with uh, high doses or treating them with complex combinations, the intent from our standpoint is to utilize drugs where they work. In fact, it turns out that the majority of patients that receive chemotherapies don't respond. So what we've decided to do is to try to rethink the problem. Using that idea of cancer is not dying enough, mm -hmm. we actually take a portion of that patient's cancer, we, we biopsy, surgically remove or aspirate, place it in a test tube, and we take all the drugs of interest and put them in with the cancer cells. If we see the process of cell death, what's called programmed mm -hmm. cell death, then that's the drug you want. So, why does Dr. Nagorny persist in his radical approach to treating cancer? Well, because this is one physician whose first priority is to heal the sick. There's nothing more gratifying to me than my patient outcomes. That's the most rewarding thing. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to um, have some of you come here is because the cancer journey, as one of my patients, Robert Percy, says, is you go into a bubble. Someone says you have cancer, and everything else is sort of resonating and is no longer making sense. And you're here, and everybody else is out there. And now you're the one who's suffering through these side effects, and you're the one who has to make these hard decisions, and you're the one who has to go through these tests. And it's almost like you've been removed from your world. 
And so when that happens, it's nice to meet people who've been in the bubble and come back out. <laughs> And one of the things we were thinking for some of the patients is for them to meet people who confronted this and came through and survived and did well. So for those of you tonight who are just getting into this experience, we would very much like to introduce you to people who have been through it and who have come through this ordeal and come out the other side the better for the experience and, and stronger. And, and I think with a new appreciation of life, I was watching one but I think of others. I'm, I'm looking here at uh, Mike, who never comes to see me anymore, who I <laughs> treated, treated uh, some years ago. I was joking with him tonight. I said, you know, you cure people, and they don't write, and they don't call. So. <laughs>